Hello pilots of the internet and welcome to Power Up. In this video I'm going to be teaching you how to make this plane using the tubes from toilet paper rolls and I have to say I think this thing looks absolutely killer. The shape of the rear wings is just so cool to me with this awesome fin in the middle, the propeller mounts. I think this turned out really well and even cooler you can sub out the canards in the front for different canards which are going to change the flight characteristics of the plane. This thing flies super well and I barely, I mean barely got away without hitting myself in this flight test. So be sure to check out the flight footage and then I'm gonna teach you how to make the plane. <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought I was going to hit myself there. In order to make this plane, you'll need two cardboard tubes from toilet paper rolls, a bit of toilet paper, some cardstock, I'm using 100 pound paper here, a ruler, an X-Acto blade, some scissors, some tape, and you may also want this screwdriver and clip from the DIY bundle, but they are optional. And you'll also want to download and print off these templates, which you can find in the description. Begin by cutting out parts 1A and 1B along their outer lines. Grab one of your cardboard tubes and locate the diagonal seam. Follow that seam up to the top edge of the tube where you'll notice that the two layers of cardboard are overlapping. Then align the highlighted rectangle on part 1A with that thick portion of the cardboard tube. Wrap your sheet of paper around the tube and tape it into place. I taped mine at the top edge, the bottom edge, and in the center. Next, grab some toilet paper and stuff it tightly into your cardboard tube until your tube is full. We're going to be applying pressure to the outside of the tube and we don't want it to collapse as we do so. Now cut the highlighted rectangle out of your cardboard tube. Make sure you're using a new and extremely sharp X-Acto blade as you cut this rectangle out. This is the most difficult step of the entire build because the cardboard tube will want to collapse as you apply pressure to the outside of it which is why we put the toilet paper inside. Once you've cut on each line, remove the rectangle from the tube. Next, locate the seam between the two edges of the paper. You can see that I've highlighted the portion you'll be cutting, which does not extend all the way to the top edge of the tube. Once I had inserted the blade into the tube, I found it easiest to stand the tube vertically on the table and work my way down. I went ahead and taped the tube back together just to hold it in place for the next step. In this step, you'll cut around most of the circumference of the cylinder. Begin at the intersection shown and continue until you reach the point where the angle of the line changes, very close to the window you cut out earlier. Now cut on that very short diagonal line. At this point you can cut the tape holding your tube together and unfurl it. Our next cut will be along this diagonal line, but we need to make some references first. Make a slight incision on this line on either side where it intersects the edges of the tube. Alternatively, you could mark these points with a pen. Then flip your tube over and lie it flat on the table. Locate your two reference points, align your ruler to them, and cut this corner off. We'll now do the same thing with this small triangle. Make a slight incision where this line intersects the edge of the tube. Find the point where the circle of your tube meets the flat edge of the tube, and cut from there to the reference point you made. Finally, locate the blue line on part 1A and make a small incision right at the top edge of it. Alternatively, you could just use a pen and mark this point. 
Remove the remaining paper of part 1A and repeat all of these steps with part 1B and your other cardboard tube. Set aside the parts you made from 1B and work with the parts of 1A. Grab this triangle and flip it over to bend it in opposition to its normal curve to help flatten it. Then tape these two pieces together as shown. Finally tape this small triangle to the leading edge of your wing. Your finished wing should look like this. Go ahead and repeat those steps with the other wing as well. Once you've completed both of your wings, use a thin strip to tape them together at the point shown. The two wings should be able to open and close like a door on that hinge. If your printer's capable of printing on cardstock, go ahead and print out pages 2 and 3 on that cardstock and just cut your pieces out. Otherwise, you'll have to cut the pieces from paper, tape the pieces to your cardstock, and then cut them out of the cardstock as well. Before you cut along the perimeter of part 3, be sure to cut out that small rectangle in the middle. Once you've cut out parts 2 through 7, grab part 3 and fold it in half along the indicated line. Align the rear edge of part 3 just below the rectangular window you cut out, and the front edge at that reference cut or mark you made at the front of the wing. Then go ahead and tape it to the wing. Work to align part 3 properly with the other wing and tape it there as well. Using either part 6A or 6B, tape it to the leading edge of your wing as shown. Fold part 5 on the indicated line, and then curve each half to match the existing curve of your wings. Tape it to the leading edge of your wings to reinforce them. We're now ready to attach the module to the wings of the plane. In order to do that, slide the shaft between the two fins at the top of the plane. Once the propeller housings hit the top of the circles, you'll need to pull the top edge of those back to make room to slide it into the rectangular cutout that you've made in the wings. This is a difficult step that requires a bit of fiddling. As you'll do this, you'll also need to pay attention to the shark tooth on the bottom of the module. Make sure that it slides into that hole you cut out on part three. Once your module is properly seated in the wings, apply some tape at the point shown on both wings. Go ahead and apply some tape at the top edge of the fin. You can see that while the module is mounted in the plane, it still wants to bob up and down. We'll fix that by applying part four to the leading edge of the fin. Go ahead and fold it in half on the indicated line and tape it as shown. Next we'll make the canards of our plane. If you'd like to use part 2, follow the instructions shown here. Instructions for part 7 will begin at the timestamp shown on the video. Fold part 2 in half like so. Having done that, we can now fold the wings as shown, just making this new crease parallel to that existing center crease. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and now we'll open it up to this position here and we want to fold the elevators on the canards. And basically I'm just continuing my crease here to make it in alignment with that existing rear edge of the canard. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now you'll notice that the elevators on the canards do angle down and that's because they're in front of the center of gravity on the plane. And there you go, these canards are finished and now we can just mount them to that clip at the front of the module. Next, fold the stabilizers about one and one quarter inches from the edge of the wing. Make sure your crease is parallel to the shaft of the module. Locate the small notch on part 6 under the wing of the plane. 
Beginning at that notch, cut the tape along that seam until you reach the back edge. This provides you the freedom of creating elevators as shown. Make the crease for your elevators parallel to the leading edge of the wings. Mounting this clip from the DIY bundle to the shaft of our module and then to our wings will help to prevent them from rotating on the roll axis, which would create unstable flight. Grab the top half of the clip and place it on the shaft of the module in the orientation shown. Then connect the bottom half of the clip and screw it into place. With your wings centered along the shaft of the module, slide your clip back as far as it will go. If you'd like to use part 7 as the canards of your plane, you'll want to begin by folding it in half as shown. And once you've done that, we'll want to fold our wings along a line that is parallel to that existing center crease and really just about a quarter inch or a third of an inch from it. Do the same thing on the other side. Accuracy is very important here. You always want to maintain symmetry. And once we've made those creases, we can now fold our winglets on the outer edges. And we want to make these creases run parallel to the center crease of the canard. Okay, and your canard should look like this. Now we'll grab some scissors and cut along the creases of our fins just about one quarter inch into the canard. This will allow us to make elevators. Fold your elevators down as shown, beginning not at the center crease, but at the crease next to it. And you can go ahead and mount them to the front of the module just by sliding it into that clip. And there you have it, your plane should look like this. Feel free to switch back and forth between the two canard designs to experiment with how they change the flight performance, and good luck flying your plane. As always, thank you so much for watching this video, and be sure to like and subscribe for more amazing content. I'll see you next time.